son of a bitch! <laughs> oh, God. Fuck everything! <laughs> fuck you! Fuck the theater! Fuck the asshole sitting in back of us! And especially, fuck this movie! <laughs> fuck! <sighs> <sighs> then again, what you did right there, the blowing... That was funny. That was funnier than most of what happened in this movie. <laughs> yes. Eagle, eagle-eyed viewers, the, the few that we have, will probably recognize that, hey, isn't that the reaction you wanted to give Trainwreck in your, like, uh, uh, post... Post movie. Post 2015. Yeah, uh, review video. And it's like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was. I'm actually kind of glad I got to do that on camera. And you all know what I thought of that fucking movie. This is worse. Oh my god, this is worse. For for one very simple reason. I mean, I hated I hated Trainwreck because our main character was a complete cunt. cunt. And I don't like using that word, but that's exactly what she is. In this movie, I have to deal with three cunts plus two dude bros. Oh, oh. So yeah, Mike and Dave uh, need wedding dates, or as I wanted to call this, Mike fucks everything up. Wedding female wedding crashers, and Jesus Christ, this dialogue sucks. Mike and Dave need a fucking brain. Oh my God. This thing could have done better as a raunchy remake of The Wizard of Oz. Completely. People, people need brains, heart, and balls. Brain, heart, balls, um... Pfft. Dignity is another thing they would have needed. Yes. But, Jesus God... Ugh. Okay. I... As you guys... As you can probably guess, I didn't hate this. Well, I do hate this. This movie sucks. But, not as much as him. I laughed at some bits. And I heard you laugh once or twice. No, no see, in, in, in okay. the beginning, in the beginning, in the beginning. All right. <laughs> the the parts that I laughed at this were two things. One, uh, similar to Trainwreck, I was laughing at just what I was going to be able to say during this video. And that's what I told him. Told him during the during the screening, he was looking so pissed, like. It, uh, he had his face in his hand almost the entire time. I had it for most of the time because Jesus God, this almost almost all of this was really insufferable to sit through. You know, you know, a movie's good when it actually when it actually gives you a headache. This movie gave me a headache. Uh, yeah, he said. I don't know. I've never gotten headaches when getting out of movies, but I could I could believe how you could get one. Yeah, if any of you haven't seen the fucking trailers or. Yeah, they tried ripping off Deadpool's advertising. The, on Tinder and, like, all the other stuff, they tried throwing in the characters from the movie. I did it just to say, fuck you guys. Whatever, fuck you guys. And, yeah, they had the same advertising gimmick. They're trying to appeal to our generation, which is hashtag and dude bro. Oh, sick girl, yeah. I fuck that shit up all the time. Do do movie makers, do do script script writers, directors, and all the other like adults think that we talk like that? Seriously? I'm willing to bet there are people who talk like that. Yes, there are, but they're but the I fucking don't... minority. They're the minority. They are. I don't see. I'm not saying that. I, all I really of, don't get how this. They think this is like universally appealing. I, and honestly, I don't. I don't try to 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 be uh, mean about people liking stuff. But honest to God, who the hell enjoys this? Who who the hell thinks this is funny? And please, ex and I'm and I'm asking honestly. Please explain to me what is funny about this, because honestly, I could get. Far more comedic satisfaction from going to a strip club <laughs> and and throwing a banana peel onto onto the onto throwing the, a banana peel onto the stage, pointing out like any any stereotypes. Which again, that could be mean. But then again, at least it's a, at least that's a little bit daring and actually trying to create some sort of comedic fuel. This tries none of this and just thinks that. Throwing gags on the screen, and that's all they are. They're just gags. It's literally 90 to 100 minutes of just 
sound gags, visual gags, without so a million and one fucking sexual innuendos, which they run out pretty quickly of. Oh god. They I I said before that what I hated about Trainwreck and most modern comedies in general is the reliance on crude humor. Yes, many great comedies have crude humor in them, but that is not the one fucking thing they can do. It is not a one-trick show, okay? They it is not penis, penis, tits, balls, ass, finger, sex, orgasms, and oh my god, stop with your lazy-ass fucking comedy! Shit! Fuck! Uh, Don't punch my car. I was getting ready to punch it. Uh, Roll down the window and then just punch the air. No, but Jesus, no, it's but, not. But Jesus Christ, comedy comes from storytelling, characters, context, setups for jokes. It's not just plain old ha. Huh. This sounds funny. It is funny. Oh, okay. These, these characters. Could all be written on fucking cocktail napkins. I was gonna say a post-it note, but I guess that works too. Any small, a postage stamp. Uh, any small piece of thing. This this movie is taking away. This movie is taking away my criticism. But for those of you who do not know what the fucking premise is, it's just wedding crashers reversed. Mike and Dave need wedding dates. Uh, Tatiana and Alice are fucking dumbass bitches who want to exploit people. One of them is basically Amy 2.0, Amy from Trainwreck. Tatia, uh, Aubrey Plaza, who's, <laughs> she's been in such better work. She's been in, she, uh, fuck, I can't remember if she's in Parks and Rec or Community or whatever. She's, she's amazing in that. She's very talented. She's a, f <clears throat> she has no direction in this. Her character is a fucking bitch. Judging by the bloopers, majority of this was improv. But she's done so much better work. So, yeah. Two bitches meet up with... Two, they, oh, two, her, no, two oh. bitches meet up with... Try and ruse two dickheads to go get a free vacation to Hawaii for the dickhead sister's wedding. Yes. And guess what? They fuck it up. Just like they fucked up everything else prior to this. Okay, you here's, know, no, here's something Here's something that I realized right away. This movie just loves to take okay ideas and even clever ideas and then just book them off a cliff. In the beginning, they have a montage of, oh, these guys are happy, fun, fun-go-lucky guys. Kind of like the two, kind of like Vaughn and Wilson from Wedding Crashers. But then, as soon as the story gets rolling, it th their parents and their sister and future brother-in-law, they show them videos about how they were fucking them up. And how they weren't having a good time and fucking everything up, fucking everything else up for other people. That's funny. We, I laughed. He laughed. But then they continue on with their original with their original idea of oh let's just keep these guys being fucking dickheads. Yeah, these these guys are every single dude bro you have ever honestly. <laughs> you know what it honestly these started, are frat these are just stereotypical frat douches. It honestly started to remind me of a of Biodome a little bit. I haven't seen. I've only seen like the first fifteen minutes of Biodome, and I didn't even want to watch anymore. They're pretty much just Paulie Shore and Stephen Baldwin. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you can you can get what I'm talking about from just watching like Nostalgia Critics review of it. Oh God, yeah. But but the, these two are insufferable to listen to. Almost everybody is. Although I'll, four, I will the, say I will give at least somewhat credit to Zac Efron. He's the I'd say he's the lesser of two of the two evils. Yes, yeah, Zac. He, but even then, I think. Honestly, I think he's brought down by his brother. No, oh god, okay, I'll get in. I'll get into that later. But yeah, I like Zac Efron. He is a. He actually is a talented guy. He was the only funny part of Neighbors, at least in my opinion. I didn't like it, but he has charisma. He has acting ability. He uses none of that in this. Probably because the director thought he would be overshadowing the big breakout star of this movie, Adam Devine, also known as Weird Face Guy from Weird Workaholics. 
You yeah. know, it's amazing to me that these guys were funnier on on the spot from Rooster Teeth, uh, the the Rooster Teeth game show, than they are in this fucking movie. Probably because they had shitty shitty writing and shitty directing. What are you talking about? The majority of this movie was probably improv. No. It could possibly have been improv, but this movie reeks of improv. When when you have some of these jokes that just go on and on and on for an eternity, and but people are just like, "Oh, this is great! This just keep going, keep going. It's it's funny." But there are talented there are talented actors in this. There are they are they can have talent brought to them. Plaza, Efron, not for sure, not fucking divine. I have hopes for Anna Kendrick. I didn't like her in Pitch Perfect. She, ha uh, I liked her in Scott Pilgrim. She was funny in that. She Wait, was Scott's, Scott's sister. She was? Yes, she's Scott's sister in Scott Pilgrim. Air Airheaded twit. Yeah, the one who has Wallace, the one who has Wallace take her boyfriend. But I have hope. I have hopes for her in a, wow, in, a new, in a new trailer that we saw called Table 19. Didn't. She looks fine in that. Didn't recognize her at all. Yeah, and she's, that's that's amazing because Scott Pilgrim's I think my favorite movie of all time. Yeah, she's in Scott Pilgrim. Wow. Well, uh, definitely none of it. Well, she okay. She's only a minor character in that movie, but still, none of her. She's actually funny in that. She's not. not <laughs> none of her. So whatever her talent she may have comes through in this. Okay, it. She is. Like I told you, she's an airheaded twit. That's it. That's all she ever. Well, in Pitch Perfect, she plays a bitch. But, yeah, she's just a fucking dunce in this. <sighs> okay, we have to start, we just have to analyze this piece by piece. What piece do you want to start with? Where do you fucking begin? All right, all right, let's just, let's just start with how stupid this concept is. All right. No, 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 it's, this concept is not that bad. No, not, not, not necessarily, like, the premise of the story idea. I'm talking, I'm talking more about where it where it leads more than more than them coming up with it okay it's i know i know it's based on some true events which uh, really I, this this happened i i doubt it pro i i'm i'm willing to bet that the true trueness part of it starts and ends with two guys putting something on craigslist or for for uh dates to hawaii and it going viral i'm willing to bet that's the part of it that was true and then everything else was made for the movie well they did say true story sort of that's what i mean okay so so they yes these guys these guys need dates for uh Needs dates for a wedding because their parents want them essentially to be pussy whipped around. To uh, no, no, the, not pussy whipped. They, their parents just want them in control so that their sister can have a nice wedding and not have shit be fucked up. Which to me is just a really stupid idea in and of itself. At least for me personally, from the way human beings work, wouldn't you be a little bit more concerned of whether or not your your son, your your boys would actually be decent people? Uh, okay. I for Can't, me parents parents get paranoid. My okay. For I me, I would think that if they found girlfriends, they would probably share similar interests. Why would you think? Oh, we need we need you to bring girls because those are the only people that are going to keep you under control. No, it's probably just going to cause more problems in the end. That and it's exactly what happens. But of course. Sense and logic. Fuck that. I'm I'm not trying to stand up for this movie at all, but in relation to the points you're bringing up, parents get paranoid during weddings that they're paying for. My my sister's wedding last last year, my parents were scared shitless that me or my brother would get too drunk and fuck it up. So and well, then again, my mom was a lot more confident. It was just my dad. My dad, but only because he was putting his money into it. So that that actually. To me, seems realistic, but well, no, I mean, I mean, I I get that parents are paranoid, but what I'm saying is, is that their idea of a resolution is just stupid. That it's like get yourself girlfriends, that'll solve the problem. Not girlfriends, just dates. That, well, to me, to me, I feel like you're you're approaching this in a really stupid way. But what? But all right, mo moving on from that, they put they put a t tag out on Craigslist saying, "Hey, we're looking for dates. It's a free trip to Hawaii," which which to me is 
again, really stupid. Why would you say that? Because then, uh, then of course, what happens after that is a lot of people, everyone, free vacation, free vacation, free vacation. They even they even get a man who dresses up like a woman to, in an attempt to to get a free Dressing. vacation. I'll suck your dicks. Do you want to fuck? What? What? What are you trying to say? What? I'll fuck you. What? You want to fuck? No. What? That that for me was that like the the immediate like shit down. all down y'all from yeah. There. Yeah. Well, actually, no. It was the uh, it was the introduction of our two female lead twits. Oh uh, no! I well. Okay. I I actually had hopes for this. I had hopes, but every single moment that was on screen, I'm like, okay, they're gonna try and do something clever. Okay, they might have done. They might have fucked something up there. Oh, they might have shown the fucking bride's bush, but they might come up with some clever resolution, right? Never, throughout this entire thing, was I actually surprised. Except for the beginning. Beginning is okay. <sighs> okay, so you're talking about the setup, and I agree with you. In, in that, why the fuck would you go to a popular site and just say free vacation and expect good out of it. And relating to that, these two dudes are fucking morons. Oh my god, the... It is amazing how oblivious these guys are and how funny they think it is. They, th they think it is so funny to see, to watch people who are, frankly, would normally be marked as special in, in you know, real, real world real world standards these guys these these girls are basically picking on on the special needs but here no these guys just like them because they look good and they want to fuck and they think it's an e it's going to oh my god there's just so much wrong with this movie first of all if you're looking for a relationship i think the last thing on your mind is well, no, wait, no, I'm sorry. In yeah, this, not relationship. In this, in this particular situation, I think the last thing on your mind is the, uh, the sexual compatibility. You are essentially just bringing along a, a trophy girl to impress your parents and to keep yourself under control. Which, now that I say that out loud to myself, I realize just how fucked up this movie really is. Yeah, I hate to break it to you, buddy. This happens a lot. Well, then people are assholes, okay? Yeah, I know. But anyways, once they, um... Once our once our female leads catch wind of this on a talk show, of all things... Wendy Williams. Yep. Uh, they're like, hey, we could totally do this, but we gotta be, we gotta be good we got, girls. We gotta look, bitch, we gotta look fucking good. They, I really don't want to sound racist, but they try and talk like jive black chicks and think that they own their shit, yo. And it just comes across as so phony. You can tell that they're just re that they're just rehearsing these lines from the script and not actually feeling natural. That's how unbelievably unrealistic and fucking awful this dialogue is. And that's all I could think during this. Yes, the characters are horribly written, but Jesus Christ, the what they say in this is not what you fucking say or do in real life. I could not for one second try and get behind that these people existed. And yeah, probably one or two of these people exist. But do these script writers think that they're trying to appeal to our generation because we use hashtags, bro? Yeah, bitch. We don't talk like that, okay? We aren't. Not all of us try and act like we're following trends constantly or trying to give off an image. Some of us actually try to be ourselves. We actually have personality. We have characteristics. Some of us can have charisma. None, there is no personality. No. Hey, uh, Tom? I could only see f what? Why didn't you send me this text? God damn it. <laughs> My phone's fucked up. Okay, sorry. No worries. 
But, yeah, thank God you cut me off during that, because... Yeah, like I said, these, so, these characters... I need, a, I need a drink right now. I need to relax. Oh, wait, I got one. I, uh, yeah, I, I need, I need some pain reliever, this is, I, I'm, I'm not kidding when I say that I actually do have a headache, and part of that, part of that comes from some, uh, one of the characters' voices, but we'll get to, we'll get to her in a sec. I'll just say that the characters, um, every single one of them are just one-note stereotypes, not expressive in any way, shape, or form, like, they don't, they don't, uh, fluctuate between their, uh, their one, basically, one-note fucking personalities, and it gets so, so fucking irritating so fast. And like you said, it they, none of these characters come across as human in any way. They're just stereotypes, and it seems like... It's these... not even like they use... It, you know what I mean? Com good comedies can utilize stereotypes in, in great ways, but this movie... This movie doesn't. Not at all. This movie thinks that these characters, in in their entirety, are so lovable, are so hilarious, that anything that comes out of their mouth is just going to be instant comedy. And to the audience we had, yeah, okay, fine, it worked. They're fucking sheep. Yeah. Okay, one example of what I'm, what we're both trying to say is, um, okay, spoilers, Efron hooks up with Kendrick and Plaza hooks up with Divine. I'm not using their characters' names because they weren't fucking characters at all, but yeah, Divine and Plaza, it, this is after they get to the hotel, they actually make it to Hawaii, and Plaza and Kendrick are pulling off ruses that Plaza is a teacher, and Kendrick is... Uh, leads a hedge fund, it that doesn't go anywhere, not even when she reveals that she lied. But, um, yeah, they're trying to go off to separate rooms, and the guys think, oh, we're gonna bring the girls with us and just fuck all the time. <laughs> and then Plaza just tries to lead on. I can't, I might not be able to control myself. Oh, will you? Oh my god, uh, that scene just went on uh, and on and on. They, these scenes don't know when to end. It keeps going. All they do is banter back and forth. Like, oh, I'm gonna give you a grade. Oh, I hope I get a D. Why would you want a D? Because I'm giving you the D. Wouldn't you want an A? Oh yeah, maybe. It goes on for, for fucking ever. And, it's, see, and, and it's, guess, guess it, the result. The genders belong. The genders go to their own rooms. It, it, that's that's something that one to me reeks of improv, and two reeks of modern comedy bullshit. No, I think it's just this director thinks how this is how people would act. But no, see, I mean, even that kind of shit even happened in Trainwreck. The comedy is just from how far it, it they can take the joke, and just how it, even somewhat awkward it is from just fr from just them not. An another instance where it fucking goes on forever is when Divine tries to explain to Efron the ruse, and you know what? You're yeah. right. I'm rolling down my window. It's getting hot. But gee. So Divine and Efron are on the beach, he draws a line in the sand, and he explains how the girls are lying, he caught, well, he walked in on his sister in a massage, getting a, ma a really fucking weird massage, which I have no idea why it would get her off, it's basically just naked masseuse man bumping his ass on hers, but yeah, girls are lying, caught his sister having an orgasm, and he goes, my God, it would, it would be like if I walked in on mom and dad and dad giving mom a push pop. What's a push pop? You don't know what I know what a push pop is. What's a push pop? What I don't know what a push pop is. You don't know what a push pop, push pop, push pop, push pop. Okay, it's when you stick your hand up so, up a girl's ass. Ah, oh, and me, then, and then, and then they, oh, no, no, they keep going after that. It's like, yeah, it's like two, uh, two hands right up there. It's like in, in, out, in, out. Oh God, oh God, don't talk like that. Don't talk. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's weird. Oh, no. yeah, I thought that was weird too. It's that. I'll send you links. It's that. Throughout almost this entire thing, <sighs> and <sighs> this, and. Another thing, this just wants to have, this also relies on shock value in order to create comedy. It's I'll, I'll give, 
I'll give this one thing above Trainwreck. It actually utilizes its R rating to a to a little bit of a greater extent. Oh yes, there's well, there isn't as much drugs, but there's still a decent amount of drinking. There's a lot of nudity. Uh, I wouldn't say a lot of nudity, but I mean like more. They show full bush and even more I, more than Trainwreck, which had none. And even me, the guy who's okay with most stuff, I, as soon as I saw it, I'm like, Jesus Christ, no, why are you showing me this? I thought, the way it's shot, I thought it was like a complete shadow. <laughs> like, I, I mean, at first, I mean, like, for a split second, I thought, like, why are, why are you trying to censor it? She's already, like, full frontal, bare ass naked, but it's like, oh, oh. Oh, okay, and Jesus Christ, and of course they hold on to that shot for a uncomfortably long time because of course making your audience uncomfortable is the same thing as being hilarious. Mm, I okay, let me let me just say one other thing that I'll give this slightly above above train wreck. And that's that the characters are at least actually treated like, like, I mean, when characters are shitty, they're actually treated like that, like they would be in real life. They are treated like shit. Mike and Dave are ridiculed by their dad constantly. Yeah, it's not like, it's not like in Trainwreck where Amy acts like a total bitch. No consequences. But, but and nothing happens to her. Everyone, everyone loves her. If she's everyone's best friend, regardless, the worst that happens to her, she loses her job. Her job and her dad. Yeah. Um, this one, this but that, one, but, but then again, they, they fix it up and have a happy ending until the end, which I was just saying, yes, they fucked up again, just what they should do. I just was hoping the fireworks killed them and they all died. <laughs> which, okay. <laughs> okay. I, this would have been so much more of an interesting movie if, if, uh, one of our main leads had fucking died. Uh, right, right in the beginning. Sure, their att their attempt of getting these boys' attention is not by not by uh, you know contacting them through Craigslist and saying hey we want to meet up and everything. She's like no no that make it like desperate. I'll, I got a new plan and she's like what's the plan? Here's the plan. What's the plan? Here's the plan. She gets hit by a fucking, jump in, jump in front of a car. She gets hit by a fucking car, and I I had the biggest smile on my face because one I already hate her. I are, it's not even not even ten minutes into this movie and I. Already already fucking hate her. No, so. she's a she's a fucking skank. Yeah, I and I was so happy and I was like, "Oh my god, please die, please die." And well, the, she does look hot in this. And no, she doesn't die. She's not even injured in the slightest, which I don't know how you do even in the realm of comedy. How do you walk off a full-on collision? But of course, she's like, "Oh no, just just pretend I, I can't breathe and everything." And, just, oh. and then and then they perform CPR on her, and it's this big dramatic scene. And then then they get taken into the bar, and they talk with each other, and they're they're pretending. One of them is pretending to be from Wall Street, and the other's pretending to be a school teacher, which they do. Which okay, there is some comedy that can come from that, but boy, did they make sure to do this in the most because, lazy and. Le just Again, like I said in Trainwreck, they try and be blunt. This in Pitch Perfect, they try and be blunt. They think that the audience is so fucking stupid that they can't follow a ruse where it can, where it can be subtle and actually funny, but they just... They, they spell out every single thing that the character is doing in order to lie to them. Yeah, I mean... How this, is that funny? This is one of the most condescending comedies I have seen in a long time. Like even it, far, it treats its audience like fucking morons. They they straight up say it's like you know sometimes we think we are awesome but we're not awesome. And then she's like, oh man, that's deep. It's like I imagine it would be deep for your tiny brain, you again, stupid. Again, cunt. why? Again, why it's why I fucking despise this dialogue. And and again. It's so lazy. They have to explain the fucking jokes to people. Like there's, God, I, I know we're I know we're jumping around all the place, but just bear with us, please, because this movie has no substance it's, it's so, and no there's, structure. There's so much wrong with this. Yeah, 
towards the end of the movie when they when they fuck up and they're trying and the boys are trying to trying to apologize and they're saying and saying don't don't fuck don't stop your marriage just because we fucked it up we want you to love each other and they do this and everything and then and then and the then, girls come in yep. and they say the exact same thing don't and, don't mess up your marriage just because we fucked it up lie. we want you to love each other and line it's like, for line line for line and the guys just but, say that's exactly that's just what we did. Holy even, even this, even this. Really, it's like that's slightly humorous in and of itself. Okay, they they come in and they do the same thing, but you completely ruin it by having them explain it straight up. Explain it, like yeah, we just said that and we did this. Holy shit! God damn it! I oh, there is no subtlety to this at all and I like comedies that are subtle okay I those are my favorite kind of comedies actually and I can have and I can appreciate comedies that are so over the top and cartoonish and everything and not everything has to be all uh, you know high high brow and brilliant and just just to be you know just to pass my grade even though I know I am extremely picky when it comes to comedy but this I've, this... be, I've only become picky recently with comedy, only realizing the stupid shit. Th this kind of shit I have seen far too much of nowadays, and is becoming... And he wants to kill me because of it. Oh yeah, well you at one point adored this shit. Again, I was young, I was stupid, I thought Epic Movie was funny. <laughs> Yeah, you recommended that movie to me. I took, I, I asked my dad to take me to that movie, and and he was honestly he was more pissed than me. And it's like, uh, do you want to walk out? And he's like, we already paid for the tickets. Let's just finish it. <laughs> and yeah, tickets paid here. Even though I hate even though I hate the idea of walking out of movies, we wouldn't have missed anything. We would have, and this story, we, we did in a way walk out on this. I mean, the blue, the blooper reel starts, and we see, and, and it was just, it was just a couple of like, all there, all there was was a couple of hits to Plaza's face from a door, and oh, I brushed my teeth with Dick. Oh, is that joke too much for Fox? Like none of the other shit in this movie was As, too much. Aside, aside from the, aside from the characters breaking away and starting to laugh in front of the camera you could have put those in this you could have put those in this movie and I wouldn't have to I wouldn't been able to tell the difference and you, and I could have mapped out exactly how this fucking movie went story wise this is almost every single I can't even describe comedy Wh because wedding comedies I guess pretty much this is just this is exactly like wedding crashers except shrink down and no likability what, what Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson I, oh, and, I, oh and be sure that they do reference wedding crashers oh they they fucking reference wedding crashers the movie that they're trying to rip off Jesus they reference everything. This is this is Duke Nukem Forever style comedy where they think references equal jokes. They re they reference Wedding Crashers, Scarface, Dangerous Minds, which isn't even that popular of a movie. What else did they reference in this? Uh, Love Hurts from Nazareth. Um. Oh yeah, they quote a song perfectly. You know, there was almost one. There was almost one blink of subtlety to these characters, and then suddenly it's. Love hurts. Love scars. Love, it's like, oh, uh, and they, and they do keep going all the way till they hit the first, mm, till, okay. He and, just recites lyrics. It's not even dialogue. He yeah. recites lyrics that he read on fucking online. Fuck this screenwriter. I want to find him and stab his knees and watch him flop like a fucking fish. They reference Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. No, they reference Ninja Turtles! Out of nowhere. It's just like, hey man, you introduced me to Ninja Turtles. You showed me that Donatello was a pussy and Raphael was, was cool, cool but cruel. Here's in a half shell. Turtle power. <laughs> petty things that we're getting mad at but this is the whole movie this is the entire thing it's not just one or two scenes that's this whole 
fucking movie. If it's not a scene with these characters acting like complete jackasses, it is a scene where that with... <coughs> oh, this movie's making me sick. <laughs> oh. It's it's a scene with with like one joke that just goes on forever and ever, or it's like we said references, just straight references, and the, the dynamics between these characters are not interesting in the slightest. Frankly, they act the same way to each other as they do everyone. They. I mean it when I say they are completely one note. The only the they introduce one character. It's it's uh it's their cousin. Their bisexual cousin who looks like um Kate McKinnon from Ghostbusters, which I actually didn't mind her hairstyle. I I'm I I'm a fan of women having shorter hair. She, uh, she acts, uh, on, she acts lesbo, even though she says she's bi. She, she, she acts like more of a cunt than our main cast, and probably as an attempt to get us to like them more, just by introducing shittier characters. But then again, I liked her better, because then she actually had some form of personality in being her own self-bitch. And then, and, but then they fall back on complete lazy ass writing and stereotyping where she basically spreads her legs to uh spread eagle hey you want rihanna tickets just and... just says fuck my pussy essentially and and then she and does. then pause a fingers her yes. okay uh... the only way you could have made that satisfying is if if is if mike actually broke her fucking nose but of course this movie doesn't have enough balls to actually hurt the women but then again, hurting women would have gotten them flack because, oh, you're hurting women. I don't care! She's a bitch! She deserves it! I thought she was funnier than most of the other people. No, she's as funny as everyone else, meaning she's not funny at all, honestly, in my opinion. You know, you know who I think the best character in, the, in this is? Not... Uh, it's, it's, the, it's, it's the fiancé. It is! The black fiancé... He's actually... He's, he's the John Cena of, of this movie. Like how John... Beep, 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 beep. Like, how John, <laughs> like how John Cena was the best part of Trainwreck because he was the only character There's who had any sense fuck. in his head who say, fuck you, Amy, you're mean. And he does the same thing to our main cast. He just gets but, up and he says, shut the fuck up, all of you. <laughs> the one problem with that was I could see it coming from a mile away. He's been hiding in the shadows shadows the whole time. He's been quiet. He's been laid back. Oh, he's the safe and reserved fiance. And then, oh my God, he's lashing out. <gasps> and of course, the and for me, he also had the funniest joke in the entire movie where his, he's like, okay, the night, the night before their wedding, uh, rehearsal dinner. Yeah. Janie, uh, gets high on ecstasy and then she with, with Kendrick with yeah and then she and then she starts questioning their marriage okay that's well that's really shitty and everything and then the next day and and she says maybe be, maybe it's because you're boring that's what that's what she says and then the next day he's like so does this sound boring to you I what what were some of the exam oh yeah he's like I <laughs> I walked across the hallway and saw a second movie and, and wait till and wait until after to pay for it. I usually have a second glass of wine with dinner. Sometimes. sometimes. It's I, just, it's just. I all these... I d sometimes I don't look both ways before I cross the street. Like, does that sound boring to you? It's, it's, okay. I mean, like, you know, not being a shitty character goes a long way. I'm willing to give you that only because you're not a, you're not the fucking main cast. This so, oh, Ellen, I I said this before. I I had a very I had a very overreaction to it. But Janine's voice is like a cheese grater for your ears. And whenever she uh, no, I you saw me plug my ears when she screamed. No, I didn't actually. But, yeah, I plugged but, her, I plugged my ears when she screamed. Oh, and big shock, she gets a fuck up to her face ripping off meet the parents much and i hate that movie so yeah you're that ripping was, that was another part i i really liked in fact any part where any of these characters gets hurt i like i'll give you i'll give that the, to this movie uh, okay there's one kind of funny bit where mike and dave what well, 
Does Efron and Divine's microphones go off before their big, like, rehearsed speech or whatever, and they admit all the shit that's happened, and, the most... e- and Efron, well, Efron kicks his ass just from holding up his fist. He's like, don't do this. Psh. Okay, don't do this. Psh. Like, he just gets keep keeps on getting punched in the face, which... I like that. I don't like Adam Divine. I think he sucks. He fucking sucks in this movie. He thinks that just from spouting, from just spouting funny stuff, he thinks he's funny. Okay, this is my rant time. I hate Adam Divine. I really don't think he's talented at all. Jesus Christ, get out of the fucking light, you goddamn <laughs> bugs. I didn't think he was funny in Workaholics. Blake and Anders are way more funny than him because they actually do try and say jokes and actually capitalize on funny situations the only reason that he, Adam Devine is famous is because he has a weird face and he says funny and he says weird stuff ha 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 funny 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 he he's just playing another version of himself in this fucking movie he's not funny he's annoying as shit everything he says I wanted to punch him in the face <laughs> everyone thinks he's this <clears throat> <clears throat> I really don't like him. People are making him popular. Why is why do you people? Why do you think he's funny? Why? He's not everything that I've seen from him, he has not proved on. He sucked in pitch perfect. He sucks in this. He's not the best on workaholics. He might have some funny bits, but Jesus Christ. His dialogue in this does not work for him, even though the fucking script writer thinks it works for him because it might have worked on workaholics once. I hate his character. I hate the writing. I hate his performance. I hate him. And I thought I was going to be the maddest at this movie. Ugh. Though I could probably give almost that same same exact speech uh, to any anyone in this movie. No, he was the absolute fucking worst. He was he was one of the worst, but I mean he was the worst among a lot of shitty, shitty characters. There's, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I, I know I'm not going too much into detail for this, but I, I've given the same exact like, I, I've given the same shit to most of com- modern day comedies for this, ex- for the exact same reasons. I hate this movie. The characters are lazily written one note stereotypes not in any way expressive not in any way human and most of their jokes are just are just stupid internet gags that could that you know are are designed to be designed to be funny without any any form of context which makes the which makes the comedy insufferable makes these scenes feel so long and drawn out it's it's got very little structure to it because it's mostly improv it reeks of being improv it's comedy goes on for an eternity and it's not even it's not even that good and most of all it's just it's just condescending I, I said I already said lazy, but I I'm really hammering this home here because they explain everything: the jokes, the characters, the story, the comedy, the drama, what little there is, and that's it. I I want to hurt people, and when I watch this movie, I I want to leap into the screen and hurt everyone. The only character that I can kind of get behind, because she's actually given a backstory, is Kendrick's character. Because she was left at Air, the... Airheaded twitch? Yes, airheaded twitch. She was left at the altar by a douchebag who apparently left his phone back up at the altar and just still left. I kind of chuckled at that, but it's still kind of sad. And they do bring, and they do bring it up, and that's, she's the only one with backstory, and they try and, another bit with Plaza and, uh, Plaza and Divine, apparently they have the same character? When did that come out of, out of their ass or whatever? Yeah, Divine is... Divine is depressed because he ruined everything. He's just drinking a bottle of vodka on the beach. Plaza feels bad. Oh, poor me. What was me? I made everything feel bad. Even though she's a fucking 
bitch. And she's shown that throughout the movie. She does not give a flying fuck about anybody but herself and her friend. Excuse me. They explain, they blatantly explain to each, oh, we are the exact same. They, they explain it tit for tat. We can't see any of that. There is no evidence that they are the exact same. All she is, yeah, she's actually kind of clever for pull, being able to pull this off for a long time. He's a fucking moron for not being able to see through this shit earlier. They try and, by trying to make, these screenwriters think that by trying to make this as simple as possible, that they're able to connect with the audience better. But it does not. It makes us feel like morons when you think that you're trying, it makes it, you're pandering to us. You're trying to pander to us with trendy dialogue and blunt characters that you make them completely cardboard cut out and not real. Jesus Christ. Watch the fucking Breakfast Club. That's actually a funny movie with one setting and the and writing that, can actually there's convey a movie, characters. A movie utilizes stereotypes very well. It's, it's exact stereotypes. These people are supposed to be stereotypes, but then they just come off as stereotypes instead of characters. No. Um, there are uh, fucking uh, so many other good, good comedies you could be watching instead of this. Hell, watch Trainwreck again. And I hated Trainwreck, but I think honestly... You, you think this is worse than Trainwreck? I think this is worse than Trainwreck. Aside from the th the few things I said that this thing has yeah, train wreck, above Trainwreck. Trainwreck has way many, so many better things than this. This, I mean, Trainwreck infuriated me, but this movie infuriates me even more. And the simple matter is just because I have to put up with so many more shitty characters than just one. And the story is cookie cutter... It's just cookie cutter comedic formula. Introduce characters, introduce the setting. the main plot device, the setting, and have hijinks ensue, have a down part, have the realization, go back, fix everything, happy ending. There's, well, there's, happy, happy with a little bit of lime twist on it. There's no real development in this movie. I mean, the closest thing you get is that characters realize they're shitty, which they should have realized in the first place. In the in the first five minutes of this goddamn movie, but and, and of course they the pff, romantic comedy cliche of the moping session, which gets played out in this movie the exact same way, even though it's not a straight. Well, actually, I guess it is kind of a straight romantic comedy, but I mean. The the mopey mope section where everyone everyone's all sad because they all fucked up and everything and they're just you know like oh man we 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 really did we really screwed up it's like yeah but we can make things better somehow and well luckily they put on a musical number at the end that everybody sandbags thank God because it just came out of fucking nowhere <sighs> there are talented actors in this. I want to see them do something with more thought, more effort, and more creativity behind it. Because this has nothing. This has absolutely nothing. And I want—I really wanted to like this. Because I like Zac Efron. I think Anna Kendrick has potential. I like Aubrey Plaza. I thought this idea could have worked. Sort of a reverse Wedding Crashers where the, where the douches are put on the spot and the women are sort of are are the clever ones this is uh, this is insufferable the dialogue's insufferable the characters are insufferable the direction even the it, editing he oh, you know you know that's got to be bad for me to bring that up the, the editing in this is terrible. Everything goes by a mile a minute. Yeah. 
This is an, this is again a modern day trend of people people who don't want uh, to be to be stuck in the same spot for more than for more than a few seconds. So because the because this because everyone that behind the project will think yes. everyone behind the project will think that they'll be bored. They think that they'll they're bored and their attention span lasts a minute. Because most of these most of these cuts last only two minutes. It's funny how the word filler gets thrown around a lot by the by the modern age, for for when things slow down. This movie this movie moves at like a million miles an hour, and there's still filler in it. And you know I don't I already explained I don't like using that word, with unless it actually unless it is actually filler because people will say filler for everything. Well, this movie's got plenty of it. These jokes that go on for minutes on end, that's filler. That could be cut. We get the point. Move on. Jesus Christ. This movie was only an hour and 38 minutes long, and it felt like an eternity. This did feel... Well, it felt longer than Trainwreck, which I think was an hour and 50 minutes. That was almost two hours. Almost two hours, yeah. If you want to see Zac Efron look good in a six-pack, if you want to see Anna Kendrick and Aubrey Plaza look good in different kinds of outfits, then this is your shtick. But if you want to, if you want to see a comedy that actually has thought and effort put into it, watch anything else. Any comedy. Watch Twenty One Jump Street. That that actually has effort and creativity behind it, even though they have stereotype characters, the jock and the nerd, they actually do pull them off as characters because of the writing, the setup, the direction, and actual thought and actual development. This has no development. This has not I can't stress this enough. This has nothing. This yeah. Just watch, just Se watch. Sexual innuendos, drugs, alcohol, references. Not even in a good way. Just the regurgitated shit you'd see in shitty comedies. Penis, boobs, sex, bush, butts. That's all this is. Sex, oh, fucking. And, oh, and funny faces and people shouting like <laughs> And there, There's literally... A part where Adam Devine cries and he's just shouting. And I wanted to shout at him. Because fuck him. Jesus Christ, I'm getting sweaty as shit. Now you're getting you're getting mad as hell. Like I said, I thought I thought I was gonna be the most mad at this movie, but uh, I guess yeah, you proved me wrong. You. Uh, I, I wanted to like this. I really, really wanted to. I hadn't seen a single trailer of this movie or any reviews of it before we actually went to go see it, and I still knew I wasn't gonna like it. I cheated and I looked on Rotten Tomatoes to see the critics. Yeah, they don't like it. Audiences like it. Well, the audience we had here certainly like they this. they fell they for the ate this movie. They up. fuck, they fucking fell for this tripe because they're a uh, bunch of fucking sheep. The one guy behind us was getting really mad at you. I don't give two flying fucks. All I was and, all I was doing was a mystery science theater three thousand at the commercials that were playing before it. I don't I don't care either. I I, I mean after once the movie started. I didn't care. And even though I didn't, I didn't talk too much. But I think, you know, I just say one, one um, other thing, minor thing. I think I noticed um, the the in the opening scene with the with our main female leads. I swear to God, one of their panties was shit stained. <laughs> There was just one big her, brown no, spot on was their it, ass. Was it? Was it? Shirt? Where? Are you sure it was on her panties or was it on her shirt? Because I saw it on her shirt. No, it, I, it looked like puke. On her, on her panties. In, in her. In, it was. It was Plaza. She had shit-stained panties. 
And don't accuse me of being perverted for looking at her ass because the movie shoves it in your face constantly. Oh, they... Uh, at the end, perfect glimpse of her ass. Oh, and big joke, it looks like she's the dominant one while she's fucking divine. Which is in the fucking stables for no goddamn reason other than, oh, sex in stables is funny. And the horse neighs when they orgasm. <laughs> <sighs> I got nothing. I got nothing else. Yeah. This has drained me. But luckily, luckily, as psychology proves, venting helps. Yep. We got any reasonably good trailers? Table 19 with Anna Kendrick. Again, hope for her. It's sort of a wedding version of Breakfast Club. She's put at the table for the rejects at a wedding that she's invited to. Yeah, and it looks like it's got a little bit more of a sentimental theme to it than just being straight up... Uh, so so dramedy. Yeah. Drama with comedy. Yeah. You know, I thought, eh, that doesn't look too bad. Bad Santa 2. Fuck yes. I haven't seen the first Bad oh, Santa The yet. first one is so mean-spirited, but yet but yet it actually does feel like it's it goes so far below with mean-spiritedness that it ends up going back over to the top. That cuz Billy Bob Thornton is the one of the shittiest people ever, but he's so good at it. He's so good at being a shitty Santa. I don't know if I can watch Billy Bob Thornton again after seeing Fargo. The TV show? The, the TV show Fargo. No, no, trust me. You will be able to see Willie the Drunk Santa in Bad Santa. But yeah, Bad Santa 2. Star... Jesus Christ, we saw another fucking trailer for Star Trek Beyond. I'm getting more sick of that trailer than everyone else is of Ghostbusters. We didn't get Ghostbusters. That was a surprise. It comes out next week. Which we're seeing. Yes, we are. Oh, God. It might be better than this. Because it's got Ghostbusters. And you Ghostbusters know, are awesome. Well, maybe not after this movie. but or, or not after the... You know what? Maybe this, maybe this really is Ghostbusters' best friend. No, Ghost. I can guarantee you Ghostbusters will be better than this because they actually will have Kirsten Wig, the direct and the director of uh, the Heat behind this, which you haven't seen, but I really like it. Um. Oh yeah, Bad Moms. Fuck you. How dry and stale of a concept can you get? Possibly more stale than this. Oh yeah, they're the I looking at that movie and then after watching this movie I thought, yep, this is exactly what this audience The is only the only thoughts about Bad Moms, Mila Kunis looks hot, Kirsten Bell Yeah, she still looks hot. Catherine Hahn looks like a slut, and Christina Applegate, you look hot, but why is are you really, giving this cunt role? Is there really any point in comment, commenting on whether or not the women of these movies are going to be attractive? Of course they're going to be attractive, okay? They're not going to put ugly girls... In. Wait a minute. We... Okay, think about this. If you took uh, if you took just a dry, stale concept and, try and, and tr just try and reverse the characters and see if that works out. Like, instead of hot, appealing leads... They're just okay looking leads. And then you're able. I don't know. At least I'm trying to put more thought into this than fucking Hollywood is. I I don't care what they look like. I want you to write better fucking comedies, okay? But that's not gonna happen, is it? I gotta I gotta go to Britain for that. I'm still sticking with the world ends with you. Or no not the, the world's world. end. Sorry, the world's end. Not the world ends with you. That's a video game. Uh the world's end is probably the best modern comedy I've seen in a while. In, in the in in the 2010s. Yeah. Well, and it, it's it's funny and it's about guys getting drunk and fighting aliens. That is awesome. Yeah. The characters are actually lively and expressive and not every single fucking joke the is lead, a sexual or the, the, the lead is a dick. But he's a fun, likable dick. There's a lot of developments. 
to these characters. There's fun scenarios. It's creative. Watch that. Instead watch of the this. world's end. Watch 21 Jump Street. Watch, watch the world's end. Watch I, Hot Fuzz. Hot Fuzz. Shaun of the Dead. So mm. many better comedies. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World! Watch Wedding Crashers! Even yeah. though that's a simple even though it's a simple premise, it still has likable leads with Vaughn and Wilson. And they get fucked over, which is actually funny. And even Isla Fisher in Wedding Crashers. She's she's just one of the girls, but she's crazy. She is and she's expressive. She, she's lively. <laughs> what I wouldn't give for just half of that in this. Don't see this. I'm just straight up saying, don't see this. Don't, don't, don't. Don't give your money to this movie because like, um, uh, How to Be Single does to rom-coms, this does to just comedy in general. It's lowest common denominator. It's, Fu it pan it's a pandering, meandering, cliff-jumping mess. And I... W <sighs> this movie crushed my dreams. No, it didn't, but it made me really mad. I'm a little... I'm more... I'm just really... You made me really sad. And maybe just a little mad. But mostly sad. That's a joke in this. And it... Guess what? It doesn't fucking work. Even with Zac Efron's toned muscles. Mm. We could probably come up with a sketch more funny than that more funny than this entire movie. Oh absolutely. I made I made single man boy uh, boy scout skits funnier than this. We've made yearbook commercials funnier than this. Exactly. But Jesus Christ, don't see this. Yeah. For the love of God, don't give these guys your money. And Jesus Christ, stop making Adam Divine a star. He's not going to be a star. I don't want him to be a star. Please don't make him a star. That is all. I'm sweaty as shit. Anything else? Uh, not really. You pretty much... Well, well said, sir. <sighs> We're going to go cleanse our palates with a better movie. Uh, until next time, likely Ghostbusters. Definitely Ghostbusters. Yep. We'll see you then. I need a drink. I need some ibuprofen. And Bye.